Hi guys, uh, welcome to our channel TechMart. Uh, this is the first session of this course, JPN Hibernate with Spring Boot. In this course, we will learn all the aspects of JPN Hibernate as well as Spring Boot. And by the end of this course, you should be able to reach an intermediate level. So let's start. So what are the prerequisites uh, for this course? You should have a good understanding of Java programming language and some basic understanding of any relation database. JDBC and SQL that will be very helpful and what are the software we need for this course we need Java, Eclipse and Maven. Uh, initially we will understand the world before GP uh, so for this uh, first we will create a simple JDBC application then we will migrate the same application into a JP basement. So what is JP? The full form of JP is uh, Java persistent API and it, it's a Java specification it's not an implementation it provides some certain functionality and standards to the ORM tool. We have different types of ORM tool. And also it's uh, used to persist the data between the Java object and the relation database and act as a bridge between our domain models and the relation database system. So what is ORM? ORM is object relational mapping tool. So it's usually map, it's help us uh, to map our object to the database. So it's a programming technique that maps our Java object uh, to the uh, data in the database. And it's uh, basically the ORM tool internally use the JDBC API to interact with database. As you can see this image, we have Java application, then out of that we have created a Java object and that object is passed to the ORM tool and ORM tool will take care of that object. Uh, either we need to create, uh, replace, update or delete uh, from the database. So that's the responsibility of ORM tool. And we have different types of ORM tool like Hibernate, Toplink, Ibatis, JPOX, ORM Lite. But for, but for in this case, in this course, uh, we are going to learn Hibernate. So what is Hibernate? Hibernate is like a Java framework that simplifies the development of Java application to interact with database. It's an open source lightweight ORM tool. Uh, basically, uh, it maps our uh, Java classes to the database tables and as well as the data types of Java data types to the uh, SQL data types. And it simplifies uh, the data creation, data manipulation, the data access and gives a lot of relief to the developers of the manual handling of object conversion from the result set like in, in uh, when we uh, create an application with JDBC if you want to fetch the record um, we uh, put a for, uh, for loop on the result set and then one by one we'll get that object from the result set and say uh, put into the object and then we have to send the list of object so it's kind of a manual process but with the help of hibernate this orm tool uh, and this uh, this is taken care by the hibernate and it gives a huge relief to the developers so some of the advantages of hibernate we have it's a fast performance fast performance i mean say like uh, because uh, hibernate like internally uses the cache uh, hibernate framework uses internally cache there are two types of cache we have the first level cache and the second level cache and the next point is database independent queries uh, uh, so it will generate the queries, no need to write any database queries uh, specific to our database. We can uh, we can connect to any database, either it is MySQL, Oracle, Postgres. So there is no change on our code base. That is the responsibility of Hibernate, it will take care of that. And then we have this automatic table creation. Uh, uh, so there is no need to create tables manually. Hibernate will generate uh, all the tables and simplifies complex join the last point uh, like if you are fetching the record from multiple of tables hibernate makes that uh, very easy uh, to fetch the record from multiple of tables so yeah uh, let's move on with our course structure and the course overview for jpn hibernate so what we are trying to uh, learn in this course about all the basics uh, and basics of jpn hibernate so we'll, uh, we'll go through all the entities, uh, relationships, all the relationships, inheritance mappings and annotations. Then we'll uh, proceed on the querying data from, uh, from the database using Hibernate. From that, we'll use native queries, GPQL, which is Java persistent query language, and then criteria APIs. And further, we'll uh, learn about all the relationships, one-to-one, uh, many-to-one, many-to-many then performance tuning, transaction management, caching. And uh, I, as uh, 
this course is we are going to use in this course um, we, we are going to use Spring Boot. So from Spring Boot, uh, we are going to learn Spring Boot where Data JPA, Spring Test for test cases, and further like Spring Data JPA and Spring Data Rest. These things will uh, will discuss later when we. Uh, start working on our application and uh, uh, start developing on the Spring Boot. So how we will proceed our application from JDBC to JPA. So on the first step, we'll create application uh, Spring JDBC template. Uh, then we'll uh, uh, perform all the CRUD operations with the help of Spring JDBC DAO. Um, after doing that, then we'll slowly uh, come up with the basics of JPA then perform all the operations using JPA repository and then with Spring Data repository. So these uh, like this will follow uh, step by step. And then we can easily understand what are the changes we need to made uh, to our Spring JDBC application um, like this. Let's move on. Uh, what's Spring Boot? Uh, Spring Boot basically what is Spring Boot? Is it similar to Spring? Uh, so there is a lot of but uh, what Spring Boot provides, it's it's kind of like it will accelerate your application development. And they think about it like uh, usually uh, developers invest their time in creating solutions that actually matters and add value uh, rather than wasting hours and efforts and time in setting a developing development environment, uh, making a lot of configuration changes. Uh, and uh, uh, writing a boilerplate code. So and this makes a uh, if if you heard about the microservices in terms of microservices and uh, this makes a huge difference uh, which is uh, trying uh, getting uh, applications ready quickly with auto configuration and some of the non functions features we have like embedded servers. So um, uh, think about that like if you uh, are trying to uh, developing and web applications and uh, you have to deploy it on a Linux box. Uh, in that case, I need to install Java and I need to install a web server, uh, Tomcat, either Tomcat, WebLogic and WebSphere. And then I will take my application war and deploy it on uh, on the web uh, on the on these web servers. But with Spring Boot, Spring Boot uh, comes with a concept called embedded server. Uh, so you uh, include your Tomcat jar with your application jars and so uh, I no need to install it on Linux box. So I just need to install only uh, Java and that's it. Uh, so then you are ready to go. As I mentioned earlier, uh, in the world of microservices, this makes a huge difference uh, because the building the rest services in very short span of time. So this makes a huge difference. And then this monitoring health checks matrices by with the help of Spring Boot actuator for like how many times uh, our application is uh, getting is getting called either it is failed or our application is up and running or not. So these kind of things uh, we can uh, uh, Spring Boot provides uh, internally. So there is no need to take care of that. And then we have this configuration externalized. So uh, basically application varies like we have different different environments, either it is uh, uh, dev, uh, dev environment and the staging environment and the production environment. Uh, so uh, in the Spring Boot, uh, we'll create a simple, uh, we'll create a property file matching uh, with a simple naming convention and that's it, you are ready to go. Uh, that's it. And what Spring Boot is not, some people think that it's uh, 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 it's a lot of code will get generated in backend. So there is zero code generation in this. Uh, and then next thing is, is uh, not an application server, neither an application server. So there are these are the two things you uh, need to remember that in Spring, what Spring Boot is not, uh, is zero code generation and it's not an application server. and not a web server. So these are the features uh, I discussed previously also like Spring Boot application very quickly, embedded servers and matrices, health checks, uh, Spring, uh, Spring Boot actuator and the projects with uh, auto configuration. Yeah, these are the things uh, uh, which uh, Spring Boot. So how Spring Boot is uh, different from Spring? Uh, some people say like, what are the difference? Uh, and how can we make the difference? And what are the changes? Uh, how, like, 
uh, what are the benefits Spring Boot gives to us. So let's talk in terms of uh, dependency. Uh, so if we are trying to create a normal web application uh, using Spring, so we need to add uh, Spring Test, Spring JUnit, uh, Spring Web MVC, uh, Mockito library. So there are a lot of dependencies we need to add, but with Spring Boot, just only we need to add only one dependency spring boot starter web and that's it all other dependencies are added automatically to the final archive during the build time the next point is mvc configuration uh, so let's explore the configuration uh, which which are required to create a uh, gsp uh, gsp based web application using spring and spring boot so we need to uh, like in a normal spring application we need to uh, uh, either go for the web web.xml file and uh, initialize a class so we need to uh, like in our class we have my web app initializer which implements web application initializer and then we have to uh, enable this annotation enable web mvc this one and what we have there we need to add all the suffix like whether all the views are there what are the suffix like all the gsp based application so these are the things uh, uh we need to as i mentioned we need to add this annotation uh to a at the at the rate configuration and define a wave resolver to resolve the waves and return to the controller so these are the things we need to uh, do in the normal spring but if we talk about the spring boot just we need to add these uh, in the property file uh, web mvc suffix and prefix and that's it no other change uh, you need to do uh, in spring boot and with spring security uh, like like uh, for the just sake of simplicity uh, this is the default http basic authentication uh, which is enabled using uh, this framework. So let's start by looking the dependencies and configuration that will enable uh, security using Spring. So these are the two dependencies, Spring Boot Security Web and uh, Spring Boot Security Config. And these are the two dependencies we need. And then uh, we need to extend our class with the Spring Boot Security Config uh, uh, Configure Adapter. But in Spring Boot, we need to add only one dependency spring boot starter uh, security and that's it and this will automatically add all the relevant dependencies to the class path see if you can see uh, in normal spring we need to add these two dependencies we need to write this much code um, but with spring boot that's it you need only one dependency and you are ready to go and next one is application bootstrap like how uh, the entry point of actually uh, of the spring boot application is the is the class associated with this annotation uh, spring boot but in normal spring we need to uh, either web.xml file we need to create a servlet and then define the dispatcher servlet in the web.xml file and then and then we have to need to create a context from that dispatcher servlet uh, by reading this uh, uh, web inf this file servlet.xml file and then we'll uh, register the beans with the application context similarly the, the other approach is with uh, servlet container initializer but with spring boot you just need to add this annotation and that's it so it will take care of all the things it will uh, kind of you can say uh, as you know uh, by default spring boot uses an embedded container to run the application but in this case uh, the entry point is to launch uh, the, with the annotation this one and to launch the embedded server actually and uh, use this annotation and also this annotation will take care of all the bindings of uh, servlet filters and servlet context initializer beans from the application context to the embedded servlet container and also it's automatically scan all the classes in the same package and some package uh, sub package of main class for components uh, now we can create a simple Spring Boot project and uh, we can see all the magic and we can create a simple Spring Boot project is by going to the website uh, and that is start.spring.io 
uh, from that uh, I can create a Gradle project and man project. Uh, I can use Kotlin, Groovy, Java languages and the version of Spring Boot. Um, so I have selected Maven and language I have selected Java and the version 2.3.1. I have given uh, group ID com.tecmart.spring.basics artifact spring boot basics and here all the magic part present uh, add dependencies so here you can add what are the dependencies you want in your project like security jpa actuator dev tools web theme leaf uh, spring session just and uh, yeah, so many whatever you want uh, so for this i am going to add uh, web dependency so spring web and hit the generate button a zip file will get downloaded into your machine just go to that folder and unzip it and import into your eclipse so i have just extracted it and just cancel and uh, i have already extracted it uh, so if i go here in it into my eclipse so i have already imported this project so after in if you are doing it first time it will take a while uh, eclipse will look all the maven configuration and start downloading all the other stuff that is needed uh, so after uh, it's got completed, the package structure look like this, SRC, main, Java. Here you have to create all the classes uh, related to uh, your project. And this resources file like templates, static files, properties. And here you can give all the configurations and the test SRC test. Here you can create uh, test classes according to uh, according to your controllers and all of the classes util classes and if you see uh, these are the dependencies what got downloaded as you know we have added only one dependency which is a web dependency and from that we got a starter web starter uh, log4j jackson spring web mvc beans spring uh, boot test and then uh, mockito uh, th there is a lot of uh, configuration which got uh, added in your project now if I open uh, the class file which uh, from where we have to launch our Spring Boot application that is this one Spring Boot basic application and uh, so this is this I was explained little bit earlier and this is the uh, from where our Spring Boot application uh, will get uh, yeah, kind of uh, the starting point so I will start this uh, application use going to run as an Java application so you will see our application will get launched and uh, uh, so this application will launch on port 8080 uh, if you see this getting started uh, and uh, it's tomcat starting service and it started in 15 seconds because this is the first time uh, and tomcat is started on 8080 port with context path with uh, slash and if i go here just refresh this page so yes so my spring boot application is up and running so now let's create uh, one rest endpoint uh, for this so let's create a class which is user user class uh, what we are trying to achieve from this so we'll create a rest endpoint like this localhost ADT slash users and it will return a uh, hard-coded user list so yeah uh, so let's create some Let's create uh, getter setters and uh, select all done. Now again, we need to add two string and the uh, uh, constructor using fields as well. So okay, so I have added constructor. Now go for two string method. Just added the two string method as well. Now. We have created three fields like id name and address for this user and two string method uh, constructor using fields and all the data setters now create a uh, from like rest controller class which we call it a user controller user controller that's it now with this as uh, this is the controller class we need to specify this annotation is a rest controller controller now 
as you are aware if you are aware of this http all the methods we have get post put delete and for this method as we are trying to just fetch all the uh, user list so we'll use the cat mapping and uh, as i mentioned here like slash users so if we hit with localhost uh, 8080 then slash users so this method will get called and then create a method create a hard code user coded user new users and just select one then test and then address i will give new york press it done and let's save it let's import the user class done and just stop this application and just restart it again and we'll see like are we able to hit this endpoints or not getting started up and let's go to the browser meanwhile this will start So if you see uh, what are the hard coded values we have set it up in, our, uh, in that method, like ID one name test and address is New York. So, uh, so we are able to hit our this rest endpoint successfully. Uh, so in going forward, we'll create uh, all the CRUD operations using JDBC templates, uh, Spring JDBC templates. So that's all for this video. In next video, we will learn about uh, JDBC and how we will integrate uh, JDBC into into this application Spring Boot Basics and uh, then we'll perform all the CRUD operations and then slowly we'll move towards the GPS side. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot.